every Hero Factory character revamped, reimagined, and built better. Let's take a closer look at all these incredible creations in this awesome community collab, shall we? We start off with a brilliant revamp by Mohamed Mari, and this is a reimagined version of Nex. So, you know, in the lore for Hero Factory, Nex was referred to as the tech head. So focusing a bit more on that was actually a really good call. You know, his blaster having a nice little data pad that controls this awesome drone. That's such a great idea. Plus, honestly, anytime you can give your mock a cute little companion like that, it's always going to make the mock look so much better. Another fun inclusion on this drone is the inclusion of this printed piece, uh, which actually comes on the Ultra Build Darth Vader set. You can see it right here. It's nice that this printed piece has a couple little green buttons on it there, which tie into the fact that the data pad is also green. So, you know, there's some nice uh, cohesion between those two things there. You can see that they correspond with one another. It's always a good idea to include a couple printed pieces or some stickered elements on your mocks. And otherwise, this very like robotic and mechanical leg and blaster design. I love how that looks. It's really, really leaning into the fact that Hero Factory makes heroes that are inherently robots. But you know, it's going for a more like cyberpunk sci-fi style for that robotic look. And it does look brilliant. Plus, you know, all these gun metal pieces, they tie so well into Nex's gun metal headgear. This is the same headgear that we see on him in his 2.0 form in the official first set for Nex. And of course, you know, while there are some similarities to his 2.0 version, there's also similarities to his breakout form, you know, specifically the gunmetal arm and his blasters, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, it's nice to see the builder combining aspects of multiple different versions of Nex and pouring them into one beautiful creation. I love that. Let's move over now to a really funky revamp. This one looks cool, but also has a lovely hidden feature to it. It's by Rafael Santiago, and this is a version of Rocker. Now, it's certainly taking notes from his breakout version, but the fact that he has a cool mech suit, well, you know, it's giving some Jet Rocker vibes. Or it's, you know, just a cool new idea that has nothing to do with other versions of Rocker. It can be whatever you want it to be, but, you know, I'm sure there's a little bit of influence there. Still, a mech suit for a hero? That always looks so good. It's such a great concept and very, very well executed here. I love the fact too that there's some interesting animal-themed weapons and this big old crossbow on the other arm. That's so cool. But the awesomeness doesn't stop there. The mech suit can transform and it gives Rocker this cool beast companion that he can ride on while he also shoots down people with his crossbow. How good does that look? I love the idea of taking the lion vibes from Rocker's 3.0 form and then saying, well, why not actually just give him a lion and then that's his little friend that he can ride on. Dude, how sick would it be to give like each hero their own like beast companion that can transform into, you know, armor or an additional weapon or mech suits or whatever. That honestly sounds so sick and this this is very, very well executed here. I love this. Over now to the best Hero Factory character. I'm biased, but it's Mark Surge, the live wire, and David Doshi has built this monk. It's nice to see David changing things up a bit. You know, while Surge's original lightning weapons, they're really cool. These cool techno blades, uh, these ones specifically came on the awesome Techno Ninjago Dragon that you're seeing here. It was a very fun set. Uh, but yeah, these blades, they continue the same kind of vibes and color scheme and rough kind of look that was on the original version of Surge. But it adds some nice new sugar and spice. Just freshens things up a little bit, makes it more interesting. And a fresh and interesting take like this, that's always a winner in my books. And oddly enough, there's something about those uh, lovely little Ninjago sword pieces that fits right at home with uh, the Hero Factory aesthetic. Good idea to use them. Something else that's nice is seeing Surge's torso armor here on a much larger figure. I love that those 1.0 torso pieces work well for smaller mocks, but also for much larger builds like this. Such a good piece because you can use it no matter the scale. How cool. Old mate of mine, Gringat, he's built the next mock, and it is the lovable Stormer. Now, of course, the original 1.0 version of Stormer had that lovely cool blue accent to the color scheme, but it's nice to see Gringat leaning into that blue a lot more, especially when he adds in some of these like trans light blue and trans orange cheese slopes, and now Stormer kind of looks a little bit like a cop. And I mean, heck, Hero Factory Heroes they kind of are cops to some degree. It does work, right? I mean, especially because in the breakout wave, they actually had handcuffs and were arresting the villains to take them back to prison. It makes sense. So yeah, why not lean into that kind of cop aesthetic a little bit more when you're revamping your heroes? It might be a more interesting take on uh, any Hero Factory hero you're building. Now, this leg design is rather nice. You're using that larger wedge piece for some more stylish and sleek angles, but also it kind of looks a little bit like bell-bottom jeans, which... Yeah, I kind of love that. 
All you gotta do is slap on a cowboy hat to Stormer and you'd have the perfect cowboy Stormer mog. That's actually a really cool idea. Hey, you guys can take that. That's free. It's yours. Go and build that. It is my gift to you. Cowboy Stormer is cool. Police Stormer is cool. Do whatever you want. Cordax has built a lovely little revamp of Evo now. Now this one is taking a few ideas from Breakout Evo, you know, specifically with this cool blaster limb idea, but of course it's also using the nice brain attack Evo mask design. But I think it's also fair to say that Cordax is adding his own unique flair to this character. And that's always lovely to see, right? Seeing people's own unique touches, that's what makes a mark unique and different. The upper leg design here I think is extra nice. So taking advantage of some of these bar connections on CCBS armor shells, and then adding in just that little extra bit of armor layering there, just to pat out the leg design and make it look extra pretty. How lovely. I also really dig these silver additions on this version of Evo. This Skrull armor piece in silver on the torso with a hero core on the front, and also the lovely use of some of these speed or racer pieces here for a nice shoulder design. How good is all that? Silvers never look better on Evo, I love this. Bulk is the next hero to be revamped, and this is built by Mr. Cup of Fail. It's great to see how they've used all sorts of different silver pieces to mimic the shape and style of Bulk's original 1.0 torso piece. You know, even the use of some of these larger claw pieces up the top here to mimic the crest on the top of Bulk's armor. How good is that? And of course, you gotta build Bulk with those two dual blasters so that he looks exactly like he did in the wonderful Bulk and Vapor set. And taking a look at these blaster designs, don't they look just stunning? Big, bulky, and brilliant. That's everything you want on a Bulk revamp, right? The next one now is by Poor Disadvantaged, and they've reimagined Breeze. That's lovely to see a good hint of lavender added onto Breeze. This new accent of color, it really does make her shine. Breakout Breeze, uh, which was probably the best version of Breeze, you know, she had these cool red techno shield pieces. So it's nice to see that that has stayed on this mock here, but we've also got a couple extra ones here up on the shoulder design. No idea what they're meant to represent, but they do look really cool. But another cool thing is the inclusion of these 1.0 leg armor pieces up here also on the shoulders. Man, the way that these pieces create a lovely dynamic torso design, but the way they also neatly cover up the top part of the upper arm. Mwah! It looks so good! It's a very clever way to use that leg armor piece in a way that isn't leg armor. Also this neat little base at the bottom of Breeze. That's fun! We need more Hero Factory mocks with bases at the bottom. Oh man, I thought the last Stringer mock that I covered on this channel was good, but M Squid Stringer revamp? This is really, really nice. The armor and the shaping here is just top notch. Look at these black Borok shields on the torso forming this rounded armor that looks so smooth, but also so sturdy. Every texture on this mock is just beautifully rounded and organic, but it also totally looks like armor plating. It's honestly so, so well crafted. I especially love this lower leg design here using Pahatu Fantoka's mask for knee armor. It's a great way to add a good pop of orange, but also keep the armor consistent and fill in different gaps and things. Genius. Plus this foot design that's using this invasion from below headpiece, specifically the jaw element here, and then you know using that for a foot design, so cool. And just to top it all off, he's got these sick back cannons that look a bit like speakers, and then this lovely little sound blaster and this little handheld thing. How magnificent is that? Might be my favorite ever revamp of Stringer. Constantine T rounds us off with a revamp of Ferno. Here's this mock next to the classic 1.0 Ferno, and mate, it's a treat to see Ferno's iconic weapon reimagined with other pieces. Yeah, this time turning these orange blades into actual flames, that's great. And even just the fact that these flames are coming out of like jet engine things, this weapon just looks a thousand times cooler now. It's also good to see these 2.0 fire pieces up here on the shoulders, you know, whether those are actual flames that are just blaring out of the body, or if it's actually just meant to be like armor that resembles flames. Either way, it's a really good look. Now another more subtle detail is the way that the hero core is placed on this mock. It's placed behind this armor so that it's a little bit more protected. I kind of like that, it's just a nice idea and a different way of doing it. Also this silver waist armor, isn't that just brilliant? And combining that with the Ferno XL mask, which is just a nice way to add a little bit of extra silver up onto the head so that silver is consistent across the entire mock. Really good idea. This is such a dynamic, fun, and different way to build Ferno, but still a way that honors the previous versions of Ferno. Now how good were all these different takes on all the main heroes of Hero Factory? This is a very fun collaborative build between many different LEGO builders. Please check the links in the description below and see more from these talented builders. There's plenty more awesome mocks out there in store if you check out their stuff. Thank you so much for watching guys. Happy HF Feb, time to build some heroes, or maybe time to build some villains. See you in the next episode. Bye for now.